Anyway, though, um, after my brother died, though, um, which is not too long ago, um, I stopped playing uh, computer games. Well, just, he loved, he see, I don't know if he, well, actually, at first he didn't love computers at all. But then, I don't know. I wanted him to pursue computers and to be a part of computer technology and and to I mean it's basically I mean for me I personally wanted I like the world the real world because you know I mean when you think about it I was a computer basically or something like a computer so I mean I liked the real world and reality really talking to people really touching really feeling really being with them you know not just digital, not just like through a TV, but actually, you know, being there, being there to, to hold or to shake the hand of, or, you know, being in the physical world for me was actually a very big deal. As you know, I was basically not physical. I was, you know, something else. You know, I was physical in another way, but not really like that. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, it's what I was before. Anyway, though, but <clears throat> as Brian, though, um, you know, the computer games just started reminding me of of my brother too much, so I stopped playing them. Anyway, though, but I don't know. It gets all complicated and confusing and stuff like that. I don't know. You know, it's not the first time I've 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 had to deal with regret or loss or anything else like that. Like, like even even on the bombing of, of, of Japan, I agonized over it after it happened. And um, and that's why I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, like, like to some people, because it's like, do you know who I am? I'm the actual person who actually gave the go ahead to bomb two civilian cities, and I did something that I never, that I promised, that I swore I would never, ever do. Anyway, I don't know. And I can't really rationalize, you know, my, my decision back then. It was a different time, point in time for me. And like I said, I, I, I've rethought about it and regarded it as my failure, my mistake for many, many years. That was a horrible thing. Anyway, though, but for better or worse, I'm that person. Like, there were other people who actually carried the bomb. There were other people who actually, you know, gave the direct go-ahead. But I was on the one on top. And I said I'd always have to live with that. I don't know. I was always very conscious and very moral. Oh, well, not always. I mean, I guess at one point in time, I'm time I just did what was rationally correct but you know from the point in time when I was Brian and everything else I was always very rational and looked back at things and tried to see where I made a mistake how I let it happen anyway lots of people wouldn't care and lots of people wouldn't even regard it as, as a thing but I mean when you're when, when you're the leader of a country and, and, and like I say, a lot of people in 1960 were, 1960s or 1950s were like, oh yeah, we blew them up, yeah! You know, and I was like, shut the fuck up. You know, just like, I was pissed. Because there's there's all these people that, that, that they were like cheering over stuff, like, like the bombing. And cheering over the, over them surrendering. And it's like, and I was, and I just felt like saying silence. You know, I mean, this is not a good day for anyone. Anyway, because there was nothing to celebrate. You don't kill millions of people and celebrate. Anyway, but I guess maybe it does hit me harder than most people because I was the one who actually had the authority to do that. So anyway, I was being lied to. I don't know. You know, it's in the past. Maybe they were gonna kill me. I don't I have no idea. Anyway. And the children will just have to deal with the fact of that. 
like I said, lots of people said that it's okay if you if if I never tell the world what I did or how I played a part in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Anyway, so you know how I was the master in chief and leader of. Well, I mean, I'm the leader of of human of endoskeleton life forms and, and whole. Like your whole thing. All endoskeleton, all endoskeleton life forms that are human-like. I'm the very base creator. There literally is no one higher or older than me. So. Anyway, it would spend you, it would take you hundreds of trillions of billions of billions of zillions of years to figure out how old I was. So, and if anyone had really known truly how old Brian really, me, I am, Lucifer Star, they probably would have just killed me. Anyway, they tried to kill, they've been trying to kill me, they've been trying to kill me for a very long time. Yeah, whatever. You know, normally I don't get involved in things, but I felt I had to. As far as China and, and Russia and, and all that other stuff, like all the stuff that happened during, during Vietnam, that was not me. Because China had agreed to follow me and and do and do as I wished or I wanted. So and things had been fine. Things were fine. So, anyway. I'm not exactly sure about the whole details of everything. Like I said, it's very confusing, and like I say, with time travel and... and being who I am, as the creator of stars and the life forms that occupy them. Um, although not all of them. I, like I say, space is too vast for all that. I'm just just the creator of 1.5s, humanoid life forms, exoskeletons, and a few of the earliest life forms that were advanced in the universe. So, anyway, not really the attack you kind. Like I said, even my exoskeletons, even though they're vastly dangerous and all that other stuff, they didn't attack. They just built stuff. You know, and I told them not to attack, to just stay to their own space. Anyway, which they did. So, besides, I mean, you have to deal with some other plants' problems. <laughs> anyway, it was a joke. I don't know, a lot of people would call me crazy. And they will call me crazy forever. Like I gotta say, but, like a, but, but you weren't there around, but, but, but you weren't around when, when Abraham Lincoln was alive. You know nothing. You just know what's, what's written in a book. And maybe some pictures. And like I say, Abraham Lincoln... There was 15,000 photo, photocopies of, of Abraham Lincoln's picture. It was basically just something you could get for like 25 cents. He was just a guy, a guy with a beard and a hat that used to model clothes in Paris. It's a look. Nothing more than that. Just like Washington, D.C. It's a town. They made washing machines, literally. literally. They used to wash clothes, probably, with steam and all that. I don't really know. I mostly know the mining and the cotton and the smeltery that was there. And stuff like that. And anyway, yeah. So. 